Hi, thank you for tuning in today. Today we're going to talk about JF Oberlin University's study abroad program and the opportunities that are here for you. Today I'm going to talk about three things. Uh, overview of JF Oberlin University, the College of Global Communications, and we'll have also an interview with international students. First, we'll be starting with the overview of JF Oberlin University. Though founded in 1946 by Reverend Yasuso Shimizu, JF Oberlin University's story begins in 1921 when he was doing missionary work in Beijing, China and founded the Chongzhen Vocational and Grammar School for Girls. In 1924, Reverend Shimizu took time off from his mission to study at Oberlin College in the state of Ohio, where he learned about the educational philosophy of John Frederick Oberlin, which is learning and labor. Based on this idea, Reverend Shimizu chose JF OU's motto, learning in order to help others. And based on this idea, this university works hard to nurture students into becoming global citizens. Next, we'll talk about some facts. JF Oberlin University has about 9,000 students enrolled in undergraduate programs. And to support those students, there are about 1,000 faculty and staff members, including 149 international faculty. Based on a global network with 173 overseas partner schools, we send more than 700 students for study abroad programs and accept about the same number of international students here. This global initiative program was ranked 28th in the field of environment in the Japan University Rankings announced in March 2020. This ranking, based on 16 individual performance metrics, is designed to answer the questions that matter most to students and their families when making one of the most important decisions of their lives who to trust with their education, and the path that will ultimately lead to the rest of their lives. JF Oberlin University has five campuses and has six different tracks or colleges. This includes the College of Arts and Sciences, Health and Welfare, Aviation Management, Performing and Visual Arts, and Business Management. In order to tailor the learning environments to better suit the needs of each college, JFO is reorganizing and advancing the resources at each campus so that the students can get the most out of their experience. There are four options for international students to choose from in accordance with their goals. The first option is the summer session. This is a four-week intensive program in Tokyo. In the past, courses have included subjects related to Japanese business, culture, and language. Each course allows participants to have first-hand experience through not only theoretical study, but also experiential learning through field trips and guest lectures. Upon completion of each course, participants will be issued an official transcript. The second option is the Exchange and Study Abroad program, which is for international students from affiliated universities overseas and looking to learn about Japan and experience its culture for either a semester or a year. We have Japanese language courses ranging from elementary to advanced levels. In addition to language courses, there are classes on Japanese culture offered in English. The third option is called the Institute for Japanese Language and Culture, which is for international students who need to learn Japanese for further study in Japan. The last option is access to the undergrad program, which, as mentioned before, has six main colleges. The College of Arts and Sciences offers an integrated interdisciplinary education in the liberal arts. Because students can take both specialized classes and explore a broad range of fields, students typically declare a major late in their sophomore year, giving them ample time to explore and choose the path they wish to follow. In the five remaining colleges of professional arts, the program features more structures in the sequences of courses and emphasizes practical experience in order to ensure utmost preparedness upon graduation and entrance into the field of their choice. In order to improve the quality of education and implement their various educational principles, all undergraduate programs have been quick to introduce improvements, such as a system of academic advisors, a GPA system, and the option of early graduation. Next, I'm going to talk about tuition and expenses. Tuition varies for each undergraduate program, but the average cost is about $12,000 per year. For housing, if you choose to live in a dorm, the cost can range from $4,000 to $7,000 a year. If you choose to live in an apartment, monthly rent varies between $300 and $600. For life expenses, it costs approximately $9,000 per year. International students holding a student visa are allowed to work up to 28 hours per week uh, during the semester and 8 hours a day during long vacations. Depending on how much they work, it is possible to earn between $900 and $1,100 per month. For the application, please visit our English website under the Admissions tab and then click on the button for information about taking the entrance exam outside of Japan. Next, we will have two professors to discuss the College of Global Communications, Damon Brewster and Lisa Lee. Hi, my name is Damon Brewster. I'm an associate professor at the College of Global Communication. I focus mainly on teaching English language. 
My name is Lisa Inghong Li. Uh, I'm also an associate professor in uh, the College of Global Communication. I teach content courses in English. And today we're going to explain in a little bit more detail the program that we can offer international students. So the name of our college is the College of Global Communication and it's got that word global in it. Of course, the world has become more global in so many ways, economically integrated, travel has become easier, so geography has shrunk. And of course, we're one click away from talking to someone across the Pacific. But we still believe that it's important to live abroad and to study abroad to get a deep understanding of culture. And if you look at this slide, we think at uh, the Global College of Communication that we can offer that deep understanding and the opportunity to learn. And uh, we have three main characteristics here. First of all, uh, intensive language. We have three language majors. The first one is English, and that's mostly for domestic Japanese students and international students too. We have a small uh, but growing Chinese major program, Chinese language. And of course, we have Japanese language here too, with many international students. In these language courses, students uh, take intensive language courses early on, and for four years, they improve uh, their language skills. But on top of that, we also offer global studies courses. And these courses are taught in the target language. So if you are studying Japanese, you will learn content classes in Japanese. If you're learning English, you'll learn the content classes in English, in your second language. So we move from studying the language to studying in the language. And finally, all of our students have the opportunity to study abroad. So our English majors, for example, they go to places such as New Zealand, America, the UK. And our Chinese students have choices in mainland China. And of course, our Japanese major students are already studying abroad in Japan, but we also offer them the opportunity to study in Okinawa. So language, studying in your second language, and study abroad are some of the main features of our college. Let's take a closer look at what that means over four years. As you can see on your slide, uh, we have on the left, first year, moving over to the fourth year. And as I've mentioned, at the beginning of your studies, uh, whichever major you are in, English major, uh, Chinese language, or Japanese language, you'll focus mainly on bringing up the proficiency of your language skills. We have a mix of required classes and also elective classes. And then in the second year, uh, you can see on the bottom row, uh, that's the opportunity for you to study abroad, for example, if you're an English language major, or perhaps uh, to study in Okinawa, if you're a Japanese language major. And towards the end of your second year and the third year, when your, in your language proficiency has increased to such a point where you're able to take content classes in uh, your second language, you'll transition to take our Global Studies courses, mainly in the third and fourth year, as you can see on the slide. And those content classes are broadly sciences or humanities, with also a focus on Japanese studies and Asian studies. Some of those credits you can take in your first language, but the majority is in your second language. So that's a broad outline of our four-year uh, structure of the curriculum here at the College of Global Communication. And next, Professor Lee is going to explain a little bit more about the Japanese language program for Japanese language majors. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the JLP, the Japanese language program at uh, our college. Uh, so the JLP uh, classes are four skill classes and they use the integrated approach and the characteristics as you can see on the slide uh, is that uh, classes are small and they are taught uh, according to your level and uh, they are uh, learner-centered, they uh, encourage uh, learners autonomy and uh, so they work 
uh, the teachers work very closely with the students to set up their own goals. And um, you study uh, different, the four language skills. You also study academic skills, but also there's uh, emphasis on practical uh, practices. Okay, so the core Japanese classes focus on the four uh, language skills uh, combining with knowledge and then you have a wide variety of uh, elective classes so I'm going to talk uh, just to give you some examples about the elective classes yeah so for example there are uh, culture oriented courses such as um, Japanese pop culture such as experiential activities uh, so these are language classes but with a very a specific focus on certain aspects of Japanese society, culture, and so on. Uh, other courses are, for example, you can study languages and the world, which is really introduction course to uh, social linguistics. Other courses are like uh, introduction to teaching Japanese as a second language. So this is kind of like a applied linguistic class. Of course, yeah, you are learning the content, but also you are improving your Japanese language skill at the same time. So uh, for the Japanese language major students, you are going to have to study academic classes in Japanese university setting, uh, setting which means you have to study academic kind of classes, such as academic reading and writing, uh, and so on. Uh, I want to focus on one kind of class that's very unique to uh, Oberlin, to JF Oberlin. This is the tutorial classes, yeah. So these kind of tutorials are very, very interesting because they are closely monitored by uh, the teacher. Uh, basically, the students uh, kind of set up your own language goals, and then you have a teacher helping you to examine these goals and helping you to acquire the skills and the content to reach toward your goals and then to evaluate whether uh, if the goals are set uh, properly or not, so you can re-examine your goals and then proceed from, the, uh, from that. So this kind of learning is very important because it encourages learner autonomy, uh, independence, and also uh, the bigger picture is that you are not just learning the Japanese language as an end itself, you are connecting this language with the outer, the bigger world, with the real world, with the real uh, experience. So the Japanese major focuses on uh, learning the language skills and then move you when you uh, move into the third and fourth year, then you can take content classes in uh, Japanese. Yeah. So for example, you can uh, in the third year or fourth year, of course, after you uh, reach the uh, proficiency level, you can take classes in Japanese, such as Japanese culture, Japanese history, uh, eco economy and the management. Um, and then when you become a fourth year student, you want to think about what you want to do with the Japanese language you uh, acquire. So you want to connect your studying with your life beyond the university. And uh, so I think this, uh, to be a Japanese language major at our university gives you a very unique opportunity to learn this language, to learn this culture, to experience this culture, to connect your knowledge with the world. And that's uh, very, very um, important, I think. Okay, so you've just had a great overview there of the Japanese language program for uh, Jack, Japanese language majors and I'd just like to point out a, a few extra uh, points that all of our language programs are supported not just in the classroom by the teachers uh, but by other um, things too. So on your slide you can see three that we've highlighted here. First the Center of Japanese Learning Resources. Great place to go and hang out. Lots of resources as it says in the name um, and this is really where students go and they take their tutorial studies and uh, really uh, kind of go beyond the classroom uh, with their language studies. 
Of course, writing is a very important part of any uh, undergraduate program, uh, but particularly maybe for people studying Japanese. And we have a writing support center uh, for one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutorials or help with your writing reports in Japanese. And finally, uh, we've got a wonderful uh, program of class guests. And uh, we have, as you can see on the slide, it says uh, nearly 200 students, uh, local Japanese students visiting the classroom um, of the students who are studying Japanese. And that's just a great way, again, to go beyond the classroom and beyond what the teacher is telling you. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about how uh, international uh, JF Oberlin University is. Uh, the university has crea created a truly international learning environment. Uh, if you look at the slide, you can see we have a uh, very diverse student body. Uh, students coming from America, from Germany, from Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, and many, many other countries are uh, coming here and uh, learning together with Japanese students. So every grade there are uh, international students. Okay. I want to mention a couple of other things. Yeah. So for example, uh, you can stay at the international dormitory uh, where Japanese students and the international studies live together, they study together, they cook together, they organize all kinds of fun uh, activities and events to uh, experience uh, culture. Uh, and also you learn from a diverse, um, what people coming from diverse cultural and linguistic uh, background. Yeah, so that's very, very uh, interesting. And also we have a, uh, the uh, International Center, which uh, organizes all kinds of activities. Uh, for example, one important one is this uh, uh, kind of like an uh, international camp at a um, beautiful, beautiful location, which is the uh, Yamanakako. And uh, so this is a uh, annual event where uh, students from uh, different countries, they go there together, they experience the culture and the nature, and they become very good friends and so on and so forth. Yeah, so just really, really fun. And also the International Center recruits a lot of uh, Oberlin students to become global supporters. So these are students who help the international students to feel relaxed, to study at Oberlin, to feel at home, to become their conversation partners so they can study together again to experience Japanese culture together. Uh, it's just really, really uh, fantastic. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is um, we uh, have a speaking space which is called the Brown Bag Cafe. At this cafe, uh, students from this program, which is called the Exchange and Study Abroad program, they are the cafe masters. So basically, they work at this uh, cafe uh, and uh, they um, what they play games, they have conversations, maybe they sing songs with uh, ordinary Japanese students. So it's everything is in English and they can have uh, cafe, uh, coffee at the same time. Yeah. So a lot of these examples tell you that uh, JF Oberlin has created a really dynamic, uh, truly international learning uh, environment for you. So welcome. Next, we're going to have interview with international students. We have current exchange student from the University of Hawaii, Manoa, Mr. Jonathan Sanchez Cervantes. And we also have past exchange student from Lingnan University, Hong Kong, and current administrative staff on, at JFOU, Mr. Tony Chen. I chose to study abroad in Japan because I've been fascinated by the culture and the language ever since I was little. And also, um, right now, I'm currently ma majoring in Japanese. By studying abroad here in Japan, I feel like it's going to help me in the long term because after I graduate, I want to be able to come back here in Japan and become an AOT, which stands for Assistant Language Teacher. In addition, I want to be able to transition in Japan more smoother and also to break down the language barrier. Before I make a decision to go to JFOU, I did a lot of research about JFOU and I found it provides exchange students a lot of opportunities to have some international exchange with the local student. For example, there's something called class guest 
class guest though. Um, when you're having some Japanese classes, the local students will come to the classroom and learn Japanese with you so that you can put the knowledge into practice by talking to them. And I think it's a very good system, I would say, because um, I can also make new friends with the class guests. Actually, uh, I meet a lot of new friends with the class guests and I even have some contacts with them even I went back to my country. There is one called learning Japanese by reading newspaper and listening to the news. And I would say it is the most difficult courses that I have ever had in my life because they are almost increased every week and the workload is very heavy. Um, I tried really hard but I didn't get a good grade. But when I look back, I found it was a very good course because I find my Japanese speaking skill and listening skill get improved a lot because I have to make some presentation and I have to prepare the quiz every week. Yeah, I find my Japanese ability get improved a lot. Um, and the way Fujita Sensei taught us is so interesting. For example, the method of reading newspaper in Japan is very useful. There's a lot of fun and because there's always some activities for you to take part in and have some fun with the local students here. To name one of my favorite activities in JFOU, it must be the one called Yamanakoko Camp. Uh, both Japanese students and exchange students will go to a place called Yamanakoko. Um, the view there is so impressive and be beautiful because place called Yamadakako is just close, so close to the Mount Fuji and you can see the big Mount Fuji right there and the activities I have to say were so well designed because uh, with by having those activities you can make friends with other students very easily. And I also find JFOU is providing us a very exchange student friendly environment to us because they are always a lot of orientations before classes start um, so they will the staff will be there to solve our problem and tell us everything we need to know step by step so when i was an exchange student i feel so relaxed and can focus on my study without any stress like you mentioned earlier i want to become a lt here in Japan after I graduate. Personally, it's because it's like the common way to get your foot in the door in Japan. Then afterwards, I want to be able to start some sort of business here in Japan. I don't know exactly what, but that's my future plan. Honestly, I have never thought of working in Japan before I study here. But after being an exchange student here half a year, I found myself enjoying living here and decide to work here. I am so grateful that I learned Japanese here because now I can make good use of my language skills to help out other exchange students all around the world. And that's why I am a uh, staff in the international office at JFOU. And I am looking forward to meeting all the new faces around the world in the future. So if you watching this video decide to come to Oberyn after you watch this video, yeah, please let me know and say hi to me at the international office. See you there. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions, please email us and please make an appointment if you would like to set up a consultation. Thank you again. We hope to see you in Japan.